Dr. Jane Lockery uh, began her medical career as a staff nurse at Massachusetts General Hospital in 1972. In 1983, she earned a medical degree from the University of Massachusetts Medical School and completed her residency in internal medicine at St. Vincent Hospital in 1986. She's a professor of medicine at the University of Massachusetts Medical School and has been active in medical student and resident education and was co-director of the Healers Art Program at the UMass Med School. She has been president of the Worcester District Medical Society, as well as editor of their journal, Worcester Medicine. She has volunteered for 27 years in the weekly St. Anne's Free Medical Program, where she is medical director. Together with John Smith Hisler and Lisa Izzo, she was instrumental in opening the St. Peter's Free Medical Program in 2020. And she is medical director there as well. She's also participated in mission trips to Haiti and to Guatemala. Thank you for joining us today. I wonder if you might be able to tell us about your experience um, at St. Anne's regarding how many uh, patients you're seeing there, what their needs are, where they come from, and uh, your impression of the overall view of, of uh, the poor and refugees in Worcester. Well, thank you, uh, Dr. McGee, for inviting me. Uh, the St. Anne's Free Medical Program was actually started by Dr. Um, Harvey Claremont in 1996. Um, before COVID, uh, we've seen up to our, I think our highest number was 129 patients uh, in an evening. And uh, I mean, they would just line up and it, it looked like Haiti, um, having been to, to both places, that they, they looked the same. Um, because of COVID and socially distancing, we really uh, had to cut down on the number of patients that we see. Where before it, it was first come, first serve. Now um, we're trying to make appointments, um, but we try to see everybody who comes there uh, in, in the evening if we possibly can. So we're seeing about 30, 35 patients uh, there a night. Um, we do a, a lot of school physicals, a lot of work physicals, you know, trying to get people, uh, you know, especially the immigrants to, uh, to work. Uh, with um, the uh, only really clinics that do vaccines, Epworth is trying to get started with theirs, but uh, they, they don't really have enough nurses there. Um, and that was the reason we opened St. Peter's is because we were just so busy at St. Anne's, we were turning patients away. And uh, St. Peter's is in an area that had very little health care. Um, so we're seeing uh, uh, anything from river blindness to um, yeah, um, delusional parasitosis, and um, we're seeing a lot of the regular that you would expect to see in a primary care, high, hypertension, diabetes, and um, coronary artery disease. But what I think what is different for the free clinics is we're seeing the patients a lot uh, further into their disease. Um, we've, seen a, we've seen many uh, DKAs that we've just had to send to the emergency room with uh, acute cholecystitis, acute appendicitis, ruptured appendicitis, ectopic pregnancies. Uh, the, the patients are afraid to go to the, to the uh, emergency rooms. Number one, they're afraid they're gonna get a large bill. Uh, also, they're a little suspicious of any kind of um, healthcare where there's, it's a, a big uh, university or a big hospital, they're afraid of, um, of their immigration status. Um, so we, we see a, a lot of different um, things that I think that you'd see out in a primary care office. Uh, a lot of these patients haven't had medications for a year or more because they, number one, they can't afford it. Number two, they couldn't, um, couldn't um, and going to get a physician to see them. I, I think um, it, it's very difficult. And I think one of the biggest problems that we have here in Worcester and probably all over the United States is nobody's going into primary care. You cannot find a primary care physician. A lot of the patients that we're seeing have insurance. They have private insurance. They have mass health, but they're unable to um, get a primary care doctor. Even the um, federally qualified health centers are not taking new patients now. Um, and I said, look, you know, the, patient, the patients are telling me this. And I'm like, mm, I wonder if this, they're really 
you know, trying. And I was not able to get through on the phone. I kept my phone on speaker for over an hour to both the clinics. Nobody answered. It just says, you know, your call's important to us. Please hold the line. Mm -hmm. so, so and what countries are you seeing patients from? We're seeing a lot of patients from Brazil, and that's probably our biggest population, Latin America, Asia, um, Africa. Um, we have 14 different languages that we've, that we've been, um, that we see. We're starting to see patients from the Ukraine. We certainly see patients from um, the Middle East. Um, uh, and we, we do see um, patients from uh, Iraq and Afghanistan. And how do you meet the challenges? Do you, uh, you might have some challenges regarding diagnosing diseases that you don't ordinarily see in your practice. How do you deal with that? So uh, a lot of it is uh, um, up to date that we're seeing. Uh, that's how we diagnosed river blindness. And we had a patient who came in and said he wanted ivermectin. I said, oh no, another patient who thinks they have COVID. And, you know, and the most interesting thing is, is sitting down with these patients and just listening to their stories. And, you know, I, you know, said to him, so why do you want to have ivermectin? He goes, oh, the doctors in Africa told me I have to take this or I'm going to go blind. And I immediately went up to date in Africa, blindness, <laughs> ivermectin, uh, and, um, you know, and, and came up with that. I mean, I had never seen that. The mm -hmm. little parasitosis. The patient came in with bleach and he was like rubbing it into his skin and he had uh, uh, insecticide. I mean, it was a very, very sad case. Um, I mean, but unfortunately there was, you know, not anything that we can do besides to refer him out. Mm -hmm. It came three and four times. He liked it at the clinic. You know, somebody was, and the medical students are wonderful. They, they could sit there and talk to the patients for half an hour. Mm -hmm. And um, so you've seen a change in the countries and the conditions uh, with your patients. You uh, keep up uh, and are able to navigate this by using the computer program up to date, which uh, provides a very broad and, and uh, timely medical advice. So, um, and with regard to um, uh, other resources, are you able to work with local hospitals to in situations where the uh, hospitalization or more intense care is needed? Um, certainly, I mean, UMass is the safety net hospital. Uh, and because of that, we send most of our patients uh, to UMass that needs uh, em emergency care. Um, it, it, for patients who need specialty care, um, again, we send um, the patients with a note if, if it's an emergency. And I know we saw our patient um, the other day whose PSA was 336. I've never seen a PSA over 100. Mm -hmm. And I'll just write a note and um, a, a UMass can get them right on to insurance, um, it, it, you know, as long as they qualify. But, you know, that's probably our biggest barrier to, to getting patients care is um, if, they don't, if they don't have insurance and they don't qualify for insurance. Now, I mean, not everybody knows this, but it, it goes by the income, it, not just by the patient's income, but by the people that they live with. So if a uh, husband and wife brought their mother-in-law or the mother or, uh, over here and they were making um, enough money uh, that they, she, she would not be able to qualify for that. Mm -hmm. So if you're undocumented, the only thing that you um, are able to get is Mass Health Limited, which only gives you emergency surgery. So if you break mm -hmm. your leg or if you have appendicitis, you know, you, that's okay. But, you know, if you have diabetes out of control and a, you know, hemoglobin a A1C of 14, there's really not a whole lot that we can do. Uh, and those medications are so expensive. Mm -hmm. So the, basically the, the uh, complex nature of our healthcare system with so many different rules and regulations and so many uh, uh, missed patients who don't fit into one category or another or something you have to navigate every day in this in this clinic, but by the same token, you are providing care for people who otherwise are not getting care. Uh, and so that's very good. Can you say anything about your uh, trips uh, uh, to clinics elsewhere to Central well, America? My first overseas trip um, was with Dr. Claremont to uh, to Guatemala, 
And um, at, at that mm -hmm. time, uh, we were at a medical school and we, we did a lot of teaching. Um, it, it was interesting because they didn't do any, C, not even C, basic CPR. Uh, so we did a, a lot of that. We were, we were like celebrities. They had us on television teaching CPR at, at the uh, um, at the police station and at the fire station. Um, it, um, mm -hmm. And we stayed with um, with the surgeon that uh, Dr. Flamont had arranged. Um, more recently, um, I was in, in Haiti and I think um, that was probably four years ago. It was, um, it was just starting to, to be very dangerous there. Um, but um, it, it, we saw mostly hypertension, totally out of control with no medications really available um, besides ACE inhibitors, which is not good for, for the black community um, mm -hmm. and, and the diabetes. There was no insulin. You could not get insulin. People were walking around with blood sugars of 800 and they looked like they were uh, like end, end stage cancer patients. Most recently I was in Guatemala and we saw a, a lot of parasites there and the regular diabetes, hypertension, that was a little bit better where they had pharmacies and we could get medications. Okay. Well, um, thank you so much for taking the time uh, to speak with us today. And, and thank you for all you've done for our community. It's my pleasure.